Welcome to our world news program. Today, we're diving into the exciting developments in China's agricultural sector, where South Africa is set to export avocados to China and Tanzania has secured a honey export deal, showcasing the growing collaboration between China and Africa ahead of the upcoming FOCAC summit. This partnership aims to modernize agriculture and increase African exports, highlighting a shift in China's import strategies. Next, we explore the enchanting city of Lhasa, Tibet, where history and modernity coexist beautifully. The vibrant culture and traditional architecture create a stunning backdrop for the bustling markets and significant sites like the Jokhang Temple and Padala Palace. Despite the challenges faced, the resilience of the Tibetan people shines through, making Lhasa a unique destination for travelers. Lastly, we take a look at the economic landscape in China, where factory activity continues to decline for the fourth consecutive month. The official manufacturing PMI has dropped, raising concerns about economic momentum. However, there's a glimmer of hope with the non-manufacturing sector showing signs of expansion. Join us as we unpack these stories further. Please stay tuned for more detailed content. South China Morning Post reports that South Africa is set to export its first avocados to China while Tanzania has secured a honey export deal, highlighting the increasing agricultural collaboration between China and Africa. As the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC, summit approaches, agricultural modernization is a significant topic on the agenda. This move reflects China's strategy to diversify its food imports and reduce dependence on traditional suppliers. South Africa's compliance with China's stringent sanitary regulations has paved the way for avocado exports, while Tanzania aims to boost its honey production to cater to China's substantial demand. China's efforts to enhance agricultural ties are part of its broader initiative to support Africa's agricultural development, which includes funding projects and promoting the cultivation of various crops. South China Morning Post also takes readers on a vivid journey through Lhasa, Tibet, where history and modernity coexist amidst stunning landscapes. The bustling Barker district, with its traditional Tibetan architecture and vibrant market scene, offers a glimpse into local life, where vendors sell everything from yak cheese to religious artifacts. Despite the political tensions and cultural changes since China's assertion of sovereignty over Tibet, the majority of the population remains Tibetan, practicing Buddhism and maintaining their cultural identity. The writer describes encounters with pilgrims and tourists, the breathtaking views from the Padala Palace, and the rich cultural ceremonies that take place in the ancient temples, illustrating Lhasa's unique blend of tradition and modernity. South China Morning Post highlights the ongoing contraction in China's factory activity as indicated by the Official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, which recorded a reading of 49.1 in August. This marks the fourth consecutive month of contraction, signaling a weakening economic momentum amid restrictive fiscal policies. Experts suggest that export growth may not be as reliable due to a slowdown in the U.S. economy, further complicating China's recovery efforts. While the non-manufacturing PMI remains in expansion territory, reflecting growth in the service and construction sectors, the overall economic outlook remains sluggish, prompting analysts to anticipate more supportive fiscal measures in the coming months to stimulate growth and stabilize the economy. South China Morning Post reports on Olympic champion Zheng Qinwen, who has opted for a low profile in her home country after her recent rise to fame. Following her historic win of the Olympic singles gold in Paris, the 21-year-old tennis star has found herself navigating the challenges of newfound celebrity status. Zhang now dons a cap when out in public to evade recognition, as the attention she receives has increased significantly since her Australian Open final appearance in January. Despite the pressure, she embraces her role as a public figure, recognizing it as an opportunity for growth both personally and as an athlete. With her powerful gameplay showcased at the US Open, Zheng is determined to fight for every match, aiming for her first Grand Slam title and a place in the WTA Finals. Japan Times highlights a significant diplomatic incident involving Pacific leaders who removed references to Taiwan from a joint declaration after Chinese objections. The controversy arose during a five-day summit in Tonga, where a previous version of the communique had allowed Taiwan to participate in the Pacific Islands Forum. China's swift condemnation led to a reissue of the document, reflecting the ongoing tensions surrounding Taiwan's international presence and the influence of Chinese diplomacy in the region. This incident underscores the delicate balance Pacific nations must maintain in their relations with both China and Taiwan, revealing the complexities of geopolitical dynamics in the Pacific. In a captivating historical account, South China Morning Post delves into the rise and fall of Zeltuga, a lawless gold rush republic on the Russia-China frontier in the 19th century. 
Established in the 1880s, Zeltuga attracted thousands of fortune seekers, creating a chaotic yet vibrant community. Governed by its own self-proclaimed leaders, the settlement became a melting pot of cultures and a hub for criminal activity. However, as quickly as it thrived, Zeltuga's fortunes waned amidst increasing tensions and military pressure from the Qing dynasty. By 1886, a Qing military offensive led to the republic's swift downfall, resulting in a brutal massacre of Chinese miners and the erasure of Zeltuga from the map. Today, the remnants of this once bustling town are lost to history, now replaced by the serene landscapes of the Amur River region. Associated Press reports that a recent Iraqi military raid, supported by U.S. forces, targeted suspected Islamic State militants in the Anbar Desert, resulting in the deaths of 15 individuals. This operation aimed to disrupt ISIS's ability to orchestrate attacks against both Iraqi citizens and international allies. The U.S. military Central Command noted that the militants were heavily armed, which justified the airstrikes and subsequent airborne operations carried out by Iraqi forces. Despite the raid's casualties being notably higher than previous operations, officials stated there were no indications of civilian casualties, emphasizing the ongoing efforts to combat the remnants of the Islamic State, which continues to pose a threat in the region. Associated Press also highlights a separate incident in the Gulf of Aden, where two missiles, suspected to be launched by Yemen's Houthi rebels, targeted a ship without causing any damage. This attack follows a series of assaults by the Houthis on vessels in the region, including a recent incident where they boarded and detonated explosives on a Greek-flagged oil tanker. The ongoing conflict has raised concerns about potential environmental disasters and disruptions to global trade, particularly as the Houthis claim to target ships linked to Israel and its allies. The U.S. military has responded by destroying two drones over Houthi-controlled territory, indicating the heightened tensions in the area amidst the broader conflict in Gaza. South China Morning Post shares a personal narrative reflecting on the complexities of identity experienced by a Hong Kong native amidst the region's colonial history and subsequent transition to Chinese sovereignty. The author recounts the confusion and sense of statelessness felt during their upbringing, particularly after the 1997 handover ceremony. Through extensive travel and cultural exploration, the author began to embrace a more global perspective, ultimately redefining their identity beyond national borders. They express a newfound appreciation for China's rich heritage and a desire for harmony and balance, emphasizing that contemporary identity transcends historical narratives and is rooted in compassion and understanding for humanity. This journey of self-discovery illustrates the evolving nature of identity in a globalized world. South China Morning Post, in the first 100 days of William Lai Qingtie's leadership, Taiwan has seen a significant shift in its approach to relations with mainland China, marked by a stark departure from the strategic ambiguity of his predecessor, Tsai Ing-wen. Analysts note that Lai has actively sought to redefine Taiwan's historical ties with the mainland, promoting the controversial, mutual non-subordination theory that positions the two sides as adversaries rather than kin. In his speeches, he has emphasized that the Republic of China and the People's Republic of China are not subordinate to each other, a stance that raises concerns about escalating tensions. During a recent address commemorating the 66th anniversary of the Taiwan Strait Crisis, Lai made it clear that Taiwan is no longer seeking to reclaim the mainland but also refuses to be ruled by the Chinese Communist Party. His rhetoric has been interpreted as an attempt to decouple Taiwan from its historical connections to mainland China as he reframes past conflicts like the August 23rd artillery battle as struggles between democratic Taiwan and communist China. This shift in narrative is seen as a move to foster a distinct Taiwanese identity, while also emphasizing Taiwan's global significance in the face of increasing military intimidation from Beijing. As Lai's administration navigates this precarious landscape, experts warn that his provocative stance could provoke a stronger response from the mainland, underscoring the delicate balance Taiwan must maintain in its cross-strait relations. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity.
To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email. Can't get it.